taking one of your fairway woods, using a tee, getting that ball nice and high from the ground and hitting it is a shot which a lot of golfers have a lot of confidence with. Remove that tee, have the ball sitting on the ground and suddenly it's a very different story. We get in all sorts and array of different results and strikes and flights and we very often don't get the distance that we should. Now there's one thing that we're gonna focus on here and this is probably, well, definitely by far the most important thing for you to think about and that is attack angle. We're gonna explain exactly why that is in a moment. Before we do that, let's quickly talk about the golf club. Why is it easier to hit it off the tee? Well, it's because of the loft that's on the club. So this one here, I've got a five wood and this has got 18 degrees of loft, but on all fairway woods, the face is curved. It's the way they help you get the most performance. So when I move above the center, that's actually got more than 18 degrees. When I start to move towards the bottom, it's got less than 18. And the sweet spot right in the center, that's got 18. So when the ball is teed up, we're able to hit higher in the face. That's got a little bit more loft. We're able to get that really nice high launching shot which travels a little bit further. When the ball is on the ground, it's the strike that becomes more difficult. And when the strike is more difficult, we struggle to get the distance. So let's quickly go through a setup and how we can start to generate a swing which gives us the attack angle that we need. So when I take my setup with this five wood, and this will be the same for a three wood, I want the ball just inside my lead heel. So I'm looking at this ball being around about one to two balls inside that lead heel, provided my camera's been set up accurately there, that should look like that. Now, I want to set 55% of weight on my lead side. I want to do that for all the shots that I hit from the ground. So every club bar driver, so 55% of weight on my lead side, but I want to make sure that the center of me is nicely behind that golf ball. And you can see that it's probably the width of a club head behind the ball. That's the relationship that I want. Now, once I've done that, I need to make sure that the club shaft is about vertical. If I have the club shaft lent forwards, I'm taking loft off the club, making it very difficult. And if I have the club shaft lent backwards, I'm raising that leading edge up and making it very difficult to hit anywhere else other than that leading edge. So the three things I want you to focus on in setup is ball position, sternum position, and shaft angle. That's gonna give us the greatest chance of delivering the attack angle that we want. What is that attack angle? Well. We want an attack angle which is pretty level to slightly down. That's how we're gonna get the most out of these clubs. That's how we're gonna find the center more often. And that's how we're gonna get that better launch angle that gives us more distance. So here's a little exercise I want you to do to start to feel and sense what that attack angle would be like. We've got different parts of the club. We've got the sole, we've got the leading edge, we've got the face. The sole, which is this part here, that's where usually the information of the club is. This one says stealth and I want to be setting up making some little back swings so just to left arm level the ground and on the way through and just getting the sole of that club to land on the ground where the ball is and i can start to see that and i can start to create a nice feel for how i'm doing that now we've had a fair bit of rain here in the uk in the last week it's not been that pleasant so the ground is quite soft, but I'm able to do that and not take any divots because I'm using the sole of the golf club. The sole is designed to work with the ground. So what I don't want to do here is ever lean back, land the club too soon, or ever kind of work the opposite way and, and sort of have the club careering down too much into the ground. Either of those is gonna give you terrible results. The most common one is when we start to lean back and we start to have the club landing too much before the ball. Why do we see that? Well, it's generally a history of hitting this club poorly, not getting enough height, not getting enough distance, knowing that we're using a club with relatively low loft, and then either through setup or through the swing, shifting too much onto this back leg, leaving that there, and then sort of having the golf club bottom out. When that happens, we start to hit up on the ball, and when we hit up on the ball, we're really only ever able to use that lower part of the golf club, which has got less loft. Now, TaylorMade make these brilliant golf clubs that even when you miss strike this golf ball and you hit low in the face, you're still gonna get a really good result, but you're gonna be giving up a fair bit of distance. So that's how we do it. So let me go ahead and hit one. We'll see what the attack angle is, and then we're gonna go through some little exercises and drills on how you can make sure this happens in your game, and especially when you're out in the course. So I've got the blast sensor on my club which is gonna give me the attack angle. And we're looking for something which is relatively level or slightly down, provided I can do it correctly.
and I'll be very, very happy with that result. And I will need to check my phone. I'll put it on the screen now so you'll be able to see what that attack angle was like. Hopefully it was pretty good. Before we dive into some in-swing principles and some ideas, what's gonna be the best loft for you to use on your fairwood? I've got two here. I've got the Stealth Plus, which is a three wood at 15 degrees, and I've got the Stealth Head, and that's a five wood at 18 degrees. And the difference is the Stealth Plus is adjustable, so I can use the wrench here in the hosel, and I can take that loft and move it up or down. Now, when we're looking at trajectory and flight and height, there's two things that really play a part there. You've got the loft on the club, which dictates the launch angle, higher loft, higher launch, and then you've got speed. So if you can imagine I hit two golf shots, both take off at the same angle, but one of those golf balls has far more speed. Well, that ball is gonna rise and rise and rise and rise and rise for a much longer period of time. Therefore, it will get to a higher peak height. So you can have two identical launch angles. One ball will go higher if it's got more speed. So what that means is, if you're a low swing player, sorry, a low swing speed player, so your swing speed is, let's say, lower than average, you might be able to launch the ball correctly, but you might not have the speed to get the exact height that you need. Therefore, you could look at something like a five. The other option you've got is something like this one, which is, to say, the three at 15 degrees. But the beauty with this Stealth Plus is that I can change the loft. So I can take this from 15 up to 16, up to 17, and I can start to play around with that to get that flight dialed in. So it's so important that we get the right loft, because if your launch angle is okay, but your speed is low, you'll start leaning back in order to get the ball in the air, and that's when many of the problems start to happen. So I could take that off, and I can go up by plus two degrees, and I've now got a club which has got 17 degrees of loft, and that for many will be a much, much better option. So consider the loft, it's gonna play a massive role in your ability to hit these clubs well. So we now know what the attack angle is that we want. How do we achieve that? Well, if we go back to that little drill we were doing before, where I was just trying to sort of get the golf club to land, even though I'm making little half swings back and through, when I do that little exercise and I'm looking at where the club is landing, I'm sort of realizing what I need to do in my body to achieve that. So I'm realizing on these little swings that to do that, I still need to shift. Look where that club finished and look where my weight was. I needed that to get that club to land in the right place. So we spoke earlier about how the poorer shots often come when we lean back. This is a great way to start to work that out. So I'm gonna set up here and I'm gonna make these little swings. And if I'm starting to land the club too early, as I can see there, what I can start to do is just feel like I start to shift a little bit more onto that lead side in order for me to do that. Again, look where the club is, look where my weight is. The key in this swing is to still shift weight onto the front side, is to think about where you want to finish the goal swing. What would it look like, or what would it feel like to hit the perfect shot and see that ball flying through the air? So when you hit that shot, where would you like to be? Well, for me, I would like to be somewhere here where all of my weight is on this leg. I've got my chest feeling like it's facing the sky. I'm nice and tall and I'm hopefully watching a ball fly through the air. So when I'm making those practice swings, I'm moving towards that point. I'm starting to picture that in my mind and move to that point. And when I do that, it's gonna feel like I'm moving weight to my lead side. It's gonna feel like I'm moving towards the target. So I have to, have to, have to, have to trust the loft that's on the golf club, trust the design that's on the golf club and trust that the strike will help me get the elevation. So lots of golfers, so many golfers ask me, you know, how do you hit a fair, what's the key? There is no secret. There is no technique that's different compared to a seven iron or a six iron. What we have to do is do the things that guarantee the strike. If you guarantee the strike, you'll get better results. I'd almost guarantee it, or well, I will guarantee it. And that's a little right, but strike was great, flight was great and I'd be happy with that.